the intros and everything. All right. So this is when I do the official station identification. Uh, so welcome to everyone. Uh, Monday night here in Berean in person, but everywhere else uh, on Zoom. Uh, I've got one brother from England. Don't know if he will uh, be able to to join by Zoom, uh, but others from uh, some of the other states. So and then around Texas as well. Uh, so good to get to be with all of you and be back in person with those of you here, getting to see Tommy. And then his better hat that I haven't that I haven't seen all these years. Uh, um, this is the the first class of prison letters and Thessalonians, and it's great to see such a, a good turnout in person here. Uh, at the end of the class, whenever I stop uh, the recording and and let all of you go on Zoom, uh, I'll just have we'll have a brief. Uh, chat here in person about uh, the best way forward through the rest of the semester, but that way I won't have to keep the rest of you with that conversation. Uh, I am I am going to oh with Cheryl. I'm assuming when you say repetition, if it's echoing, part of the issue is just the Wi-Fi here, Marie and Dare is trying to switch and get a uh, better, uh, better service here, but it's not, not here yet. Uh, I want us to go ahead and do introductions first. We will pray just a little bit later. Um, don't want to make all of you have to get up. If you just speak up from where you are, those online should be able to hear you well. You won't have any trouble hearing them because it comes across loud and clear. Uh, having jousted with you a little bit, Kirk. So we have two Kirks. I'm Kirk. We've got Kirk Castleman, but he's much older than I am. I'm not saying you're you're an old man, but uh, much older, like 80 watt Kirk. Uh, it's uh, it's like it's like what Paul said. Paul Paul said Paul the old man. That's that's a good thing. I, I'm able. Yeah. I've I've studied this a little bit, but I'm so excited about being here. God bless us. Well, well, uh, I just I'll refer to him often as Kirk Senior, uh, just so there's no confusion uh, between myself and him, but. Kirk, let you, I know you just muted again, but uh, since you're not shy about speaking up, uh, let you just do a quick intro, just any little bit about yourself. Uh, I know you said a bit just then, but uh, I'll start there on Zoom with, with those of you there, and we'll finish up here in person. So go ahead, Kirk. Uh, Kirk Castleman, I preached for 57 years, uh, including a stint in Africa. And uh, just wanted to announce to the class also that a group of us are going to the uh, Houston Christian University. It used to be Houston Baptist, but it's now Houston Christian University. And we're going to be touring the Dunham Bible Museum. If you'd like to attend with us, it's free. We'll meet over there at two o'clock on Saturday afternoon. And you're welcome to join us. We have a group of about a dozen uh, going from the congregation where I'm a member. And uh, it's an exciting museum. If you've never been, you ought to go. And uh, I, I'm, I'm real excited about the class tonight, Kirk, and looking forward to it. Uh, thank you, Kirk. It's always a blessing to have you join. I always appreciate your input. As much as I can, I'm going to go down the list as it shows up here. If you have trouble unmuting, I guess I will see that. But otherwise, Carolyn, uh, next. Hi, I'm Carolyn Lanier. I'm from Springfield, Massachusetts. And I'm returning. And I'm glad to be back. I'm just glad to be back. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I forgot to mention. In Massachusetts, so uh, so good to have you, Carolyn. Uh, you're next, Deanna. 
Hi, my name is Judith Walker. I am um, I live in Missouri City, Texas. Um, right now, I'm here in Louisiana with my mom. But um, I'm just so excited about this class, about being here. Um, it's it's a great um, investment for me, <laughs> and uh, I look forward. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Judith. Uh, we talked about it Saturday in class, and Judith has studied with us for resident to say how many years. I didn't go back. Maybe over that, 10, 10. Yeah. <laughs> so. Love it. Uh, uh, Deanna, uh, can you unmute okay and just uh, give a brief uh, intro? Maybe not. Okay. It's not, yeah, it's not coming across, but uh, until I see it unmute or can hear you, I'll say on our behalf, Deanna Christmas. Uh, from uh, where we are in Canyon and worship at the, at the same church there, Canyon Hills. Her dad is the uh, minister there, and uh, so it's good. Good to have him. There's, there's her mom, Anita. <laughs> so uh, we'll see if we get y'all. Amanda, would you unmute? Good evening. I'm sorry, it's going to sound a little loud um, at work, actually, so they got a lot of music behind me. But oh. I'm at Broussard, and I did, I'm a returning student. I think I've had three, four classes now, and I'm looking forward to this year. Okay. All right. Thank you, Pat. Okay. All right. And then... Uh, Meta, are you uh, able to unmute? Yes, I'm here. Yes, my, my name is Amita, and I'm from League City. Uh, this will be my second class with the group, so I'm looking forward to it and excited about the study of Paul. All right, and sorry for, I always really care about pronunciation of names, so uh, either I didn't get to uh, talk with you in person last time, but uh, we've dialogued by email a lot, but I don't hear the pronunciation in email. So, Anita, thank you. Uh, Chooks, how about you? Hello? Yeah, I'm sorry. We can I'm, hear I'm, I'm kind of late, a little bit late. Uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no problem. I was Just, rushing uh, to, uh, to, to get to this, uh, yeah. Yeah, you want me to introduce myself? Yes, please. Okay, uh, my name is Chooks. Um, I've been um, on this uh, program and, uh, you know, with SHBI for since 2015 or 2016. Um, and, you know, uh, with the COVID, I normally attend in class after the COVID and so many other things, I'm still, um, trying to hash some things out with the church and everything really busy, but um, I, I truly wanted to uh, take this class because I wanted to study more of Ephesians and, and more of the epistle. So uh, that's one of the reasons why I decided to take this class. So I've been uh, with HB, uh, SHBI, I think since uh, 2016. Um, so uh, but, uh, it's, uh, I love it. I enjoy taking the class with uh, Kirk. And, uh, you know, I'm always blessed, uh, you know, uh, taking these classes. So I'm looking forward to, you know, um, you know, spending time with you guys and uh, uh, hopefully I'll uh, get to know each other more. Yeah, thank you, Chooks. And yes, we've been able to study together for years and I appreciate Chooks and his wife, Ann, uh, way over in West Houston. And they've uh, invited Susan and I to uh, worship with them. I've uh, been over there to, to preach a couple of times in the church that they have meeting there. And so it's good to get to reconnect again. It got, uh, uh, we, we kind of lost connection a little bit there during COVID. So Byron, uh, let you go next. Hey, Kirk. Hey, everyone. Sorry for my tardiness, Kirk. I 
you know, moving around in traffic. I don't have the longevity in which I just have shared, but I was honored to be in the class with you last semester. And uh, I see Precious is with us. I see some familiar names out there. Glad to be back with you guys. Looking forward to this venture in the prison letters. That was something that really sparked my and that I'm very familiar with Paul writings, but to really get an in-depth look and uh, understanding from coming out of our last class about that I'm not viewing it through Western eyes. Uh, and with that, I'm looking forward to this journey. Hello, everyone, and sorry for my tardiness. All right, great. Thank you. It's good to have you back, Myron. It was uh, a really good study with you last semester. Uh, so we still have, uh, let me curve in. Uh, uh, just sent a message, and so Kervin, if you're not able to unmute, then uh, Kervin in the Houston area here greeted all of you in the chat message, and uh, just said that he's glad to get to be here to to study. Uh, Rhonda, how about you? Good evening, everybody. My name is Rhonda. I'm in the Houston area. Um, been a believer for years and I got to sit in Saturday and hear Kurt and I'm so looking forward to the prison letters in Thessalonians. Great. Good to have you again, Rhonda. Uh, Hello. Karen. Karen, how about you? Hello, I'm Karen Sanders. And I'm uh, in the Pearland area. I participated with SHBI in several classes last semester, and I'm excited about the ones just now starting up for this semester. Welcome, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Kendrick, uh, how about you? Can you unmute and speak to us? Hey, yeah. Uh, this is my second semester of uh, taking classes with Kirk and them, so I'm kind of excited. I had a good time last time. It was a, it was a lot of work, I ain't going to lie. <laughs> it was. <laughs> and I learned a lot, but because I took the one, he told me not to take classes, but I did anyway. But it was a lot of work. I learned a lot, and it kept me uh, structured and disciplined. So. But I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I couldn't make all the classes, but because I'm at work, so I'm at work right now. So I'm just, hey, everybody, I'm sorry that I'm late. Nice to meet everyone. I'm Kendrick. I'm in the Houston area. Have a great day. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Kendrick. Yeah, I'm, I know at least, I mean, two of my classes, and I'm thinking there was another one. So uh, Kendrick did well with a, a large load. Uh, Precious. You, uh, Hello, everyone. I am Precious Waters uh, from Atlanta, Georgia, relocated to Houston about almost six years ago. I live in the Pearland area, and uh, I've been uh, with uh, South Houston Bible Institute since, I believe, fall of 2021. So uh, I'm just looking forward to growing even more. So it's just been so helpful. So thank you for these classes. Yeah, Glad to you. be here. Uh, you blessed us with what you shared through the going on two years now and, and thankful to, to have you back. Um, Sandra Mitchell, we have uh, more than one Sandra that get you, Sandra Mitchell. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Can hey, how are y'all? I'm good. I'm from Meridian, Mississippi, and I'm brand new with everything. This Zoom, the actual facility, everything. So if y'all bear with me, if I make any mistakes, I apologize. It's nice yeah. to meet everybody, though. Thank you for having me as a student. Yeah, it's so good that we can... Oh, oh, we love, love you being able to join us and great that we can beam you in from Mississippi. <laughs> so, 
it's so good to have you. How did Sandra get connected, Bert? Uh, Sandra, I'm trying to remember from your registration. I think you heard it over, was it KSBJ or how did you find out? I actually found it through Google. Okay. Yeah, we have a, a good number that just find us searching. So, all right. Great. Well, go ahead, Sandra. Is it uh, Pradia? Is that how you pronounce it? It's Pradia. Let me say good evening to everyone. Um, I've actually taken a class with SHBI on last year. I currently have been going to HCU. I just decided to opt out this spring and pick up again in the summer. Um, just looking forward to this new class on the letters in Thessalonians. Great. Good, good to have you back, Sandra. Uh, Sean, uh, have you share with us? Can you hear me? Yes, got you there. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to do so much different audio here because I'm trying to log on to my uh, computer because I'm having issues with the phone, but I am a previous Kirkerite. Uh, <laughs> some amazing classes from this gentleman again I love it um I've been gone for probably a, a little bit of time here but I'm excited to get back and uh study this amazing amazing man who um wow I I don't know what to say but uh, the strength and diligence of Paul. I'm actually teaching Acts to, I have a group of five-year-olds and we just studied the shipwreck. And uh, so it's it's exciting. I can't wait to get into the letters. So thank you very much. I'm very excited. Great. Well, good to, good to connect with you again, Sean. That is so good. I think from Needville, I think that's where you still are. Uh, and that Cheryl, that leaves us with you. And it shows that you're on here twice, but one of them, I think, okay, it's going to be that one. So go ahead. Which Cheryl? You. Uh, <laughs> there's two Cheryl folks on here, but I know they're both you. So. Okay. Oh, we're can you hear me? Okay, we did there. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, yeah, I'm Cheryl Stokes, and I'm the secretary for SHBI. And and if anybody needs any help, you can always call me at the office Monday through Thursday. And I love SHBI, and I'm real excited to be back studying. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of uh, credit to Cheryl with uh, what she does in the office and uh, has been with SHBI now, Cheryl. What is it? 20, how many years? What are 24. 24 years. Oh, uh, 24 in, years. In working. And, and working for, you know, serving SHBI. And so very, very thankful for her. I was in the office uh, with her today. And so, uh, so grateful for her. Uh, I think that has all of you online here, Vivian's on there, but she's in, she helps with attendance. So she's here in person. So uh, I'm going to, let each of you just do a, a quick intro, uh, but if you would just uh, speak up louder than you normally would talk, uh, as if somebody's hard of hearing, and uh, that way uh, the, the owl should get you okay. So if you don't mind, Floyd, I'll just start right here with you. Uh, my name is Floyd, I go to MBT and returning student and just trying to learn. Okay. A man of many words. <laughs> I am Floyd's wife, Carmen. 
and we have taken many of the uh, SAPI's classes. I've lost count. Um, we've uh, worked for what 15 years or so uh, with Kirk and Susan, and uh, we missed them. Uh, we're really excited about taking this class. However, I think we've taken it before, but um, can't hurt because I don't seem to remember a whole lot. <laughs> that's that's who I am. See, um, I'm gonna ask if there any one of you just uh, are okay. Are y'all are y'all hearing okay out there online? One of you unmute. <laughs> yes, it's coming through fairly yes, clear. Yes, we hear you fine. Aaron also. Oh, great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to say real quickly on Floyd and Carmen that just uh, shared. Uh, very grateful to them. Uh, from SHBI perspective, they, they help a lot with volunteer work in the office with Cheryl when it comes to especially the big mail outs. Cheryl can always call them Floyd and Carmen, and we have uh, three big mail outs a year for the, the beginning of the semester to all of you students, and then the uh, financial appeal, and so, so grateful to Floyd and Carmen, as well as Vivian that's about to uh, introduce herself, that she's uh, helped for many years now as well, so Vivian, go ahead. My name is Vivian Tiny, and I've been going to SHBI over 15 years. I started out with B. Shelburne, which is Kirk's uncle, and just feel super, super blessed to have these lessons, the in-depth, and to have acquaintances become friends now that I'm at here, and I miss Kirk and Susan, but I'm so excited that y'all up there with the books. Yeah, thank you. Nice to see everybody here and the new people too. Yeah. So there's only only one honey here for me, and that's <laughs> that's Susan. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Susan Hayes. I am Kurt's wife, and we are so thrilled for everybody to be in the classes with us and to meet new people. And uh, we're so thankful for the avenue of Zoom where we can have so many more in our classes than ever before. And uh, we have three sons who have all been missionaries and they're all moving back. And we're about to have all six grants. It's close to us, so we're so thankful. Cheryl. Hi, I'm Cheryl Jones. I go to Nikki Jennings, and I'm also very thankful to have SHBI. Can't help the classes I've over the years. <laughs> And I'm thinking maybe around what Vivian is saying because I have I had some classes with the before. So very thankful for the in-depth study and helping to grow as a Christian and the relationships from our class and friends. And so all of that's very precious to me. So thank you for early these efforts. All right. Hi, I'm Deborah Smith. Uh, this is my husband, Tommy, well, so you know him. And this is my first time attending. I had been promising him that I was going to <laughs> start, and I decided that now is a good time. So, um, my name is Tommy Smith. Uh, this is my first time here. The last class I attended was a uh, revelation. Uh, always a privilege to come back and to learn more about God's holy word. Uh, I'm excited to be here today. I'm all I'm excited to have a life. Yeah, <laughs> great. Margie, yeah. Uh, uh, we have a well, we have a parallel in Missouri City. Yeah. Uh, I have been talking about this very long. All right, so harder to hear as well, but Margie, uh, Margie's uh, studied with us for a number of years too, and always blessed to have her. So, Mary? I'm Mary Wallace, and I am a returning student, and I'm glad to be back with my SDR family. I study on the Pastor Key and Shelter. I've been with the probably well over 15 years, I'm not really sure. 
and uh, he volunteered work at the Star of Hope and the Bread of Life, when they were the same time downtown. And I call SBI my family because every event that I have, uh, we have uh, given at the Star of Hope, my family came through. This year, family, there were over 300 people that were fed. Everybody had gifts, packages, cologne, and 20 people gave their life to Christ. Oh, oh wow. wow. Family, I feel that this is where I got my start, my strength, my faith, and the wisdom and knowledge to carry it on to do what I do. Yeah. And encourage. And uh, you speak of the SHBI family being a blessing to you and Star of Hope, but uh, God's so good. He always works both ways, and you've enriched our lives, Mary, through the years and sharing from your life experience and uh, how you. Uh, minister with the, the ladies, especially there at Star of Hope. Mary has uh, really uh, been a blessing to us. Um, Cynthia? Yes, I'm Cynthia Evelyn. I'm in Pasadena. I'm the first time in Pasadena, but I also was in Pasadena and in New York. I've been coming. Yeah. 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 Class as well, but you know, I think this is real. I'm not calling it the refresher, and it's kind of like a battle when you can get something. Yeah. Better. Well, and I've talked through it several times, and uh, it's always, uh, there's always uh, yeah. more to learn. And you won't ever just completely get rid of us like a, a bad enchilada or something was just keep coming back. So, um, Robert. Um, my name is Robert Castillo, and uh, I've been doing this for the past, I guess, three or four or five years now. It's kind of hard to keep account. I'm a member of the Great Houston Church, and uh, I'm looking forward to studying all of that Yeah, thank you, Robert. Yes, Onesimo. My name is Onesimo Trevino. I'm a returning student of uh, homegrown Texas, raised here in Houston. <laughs> and uh, I'm looking forward to studying learning and fellowshipping with all my brothers and sisters. It's such a pleasure to be here with you all. And I just want to say that in regards to what Kirk said, that God works both ways, that a lot of times we think we're giving, but we're actually receiving. And it's just wonderful to share it with each other. So yeah. Yeah. Yes, Rebecca. I'm Rebecca Duckworth. This is my first appearance with SH SHBI. SHBI. And uh, I went to class on Saturday and I was just so impressed that I went ahead and signed up for, I had already planned on two classes and I went ahead and signed up for tonight. So I'm, I'm taking a break and I just, I'm so excited to be here. I just listened to your stories and how long you've been here. And it's just a great testimony. To what God has done with this program and with all the fellowship. So I'm just hoping to be a part of that and to learn and to increase my foundation. So uh, and for all of you out there on Zoom and then later on YouTube, that warm round of applause applies to you as well. Yeah. We're all so grateful. Well, I was just thinking of that. Vivian was saying uh, for SHBI, I believe this is the 76th year. Uh, and, uh, you know, not being here with it, this is for Susan and me, uh, 15 years. So we did. She mentioned our sons serving in Africa, just a real quick intro for ourselves. Um, uh, 40 years of marriage for us this year. We married in 83. And then we, uh, we ran over to Kenya soon after, eight months later in 84. And so we were in Kenya, in Africa, for 15 years from 84 to 99. And our sons were born there. 
We went to Lubbock, Texas when we came back and taught at uh, Lubbock Christian University in Bible and Missions and uh, served as spiritual life minister for the campus. And then in 08, uh, the directors asked us to consider moving down here. And Houston wasn't the first place or highest place on our list that we thought we would be moving to, but it was very good. The uh, 14 years that we were down here, uh, and our lives are much, much richer for having been here. And we're so thankful to be able to carry on the connection with all of you. And 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 Vivian mentioning the the number of years that the Lord has used us HBI. Uh, I love being able to speak of it because it's not any of patting myself on the back. It's I'm simply taking the baton and carrying it on from those that have gone before. Uh, Brother Shelburne B's dad uh, in '46 in Kerrville. My dad studied with this ministry in 1950 to 52 uh, in Kerrville, and then. Uh, uh, with us being invited in in 08, we're just uh, so grateful to, to be a part of it. And, and then as Susan mentioned, we're after our boys being uh, abroad in Africa, now moving back and our grandkids, instead of a continent away, uh, three of them will be 15 minutes away from us. They're in Amarillo and then the others are an hour and a half away in Lubbock. So we're so thankful. And the second class tonight, our middle son, Ryan, will be, will be teaching it together. He'll join by Zoom. Where's Ty? Ty is in Fort Worth still. He is, yes, uh, he's uh, working with the Bible translation company there, the seed company. And we love, one of the reasons it works out great to come down here is because we go through there and see him. We either spend the night, have lunch. So we, yeah, uh, I, I don't know, I, I think he would get tired of us every week or something we so. Uh, well, let's uh, pause and pray together, and then uh, we will uh, dive in to our study. Holy, loving Father, we do come before you with thanksgiving. And we are so grateful to be called your people. And as Cynthia said earlier, it's the fellowship that we enjoy at times like this. Uh, really are appetizers. It's a, a foretaste of, of what heaven will be like as we come together under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So, Father, we just want you to know how deeply grateful we are uh, for your great love for us, your patience and mercy and compassion. Thank you so much for uh, Jesus and the love you've shown through Jesus for the life that we have, the eternal life beginning right now. Thank you for hope that we have, even in the face of difficulties and death, that uh, we have a hope that goes on to the other side and sustains us. We're grateful, Father, for all of those that have gone before us. And as they have gone home with you, the, the way that they've invested in our lives and blessed our lives, we're, we're so grateful. and. We are your servants. Let it be with us as you will, as you use us in our lives um, to, to be a blessing and to be blessed uh, by others. Thank you for your Holy Spirit living in us, guiding us, directing us. And as we come to our study tonight, Father, uh, we invite you to be present with us. Father, we do not think that of our own uh, intellect, understanding that we can grasp and, and truly know you. And so that we ask you through your spirit uh, being present with us uh, online with er where every person is uh, across the states here tonight and in this place that your spirit is here. Whenever you are present, whenever we are in your presence, Father, we see more clearly, we think more clearly, we understand and I pray that for each of us. Uh, pray that our hearts are warmed and encouraged as we study together tonight, that our love for Jesus is deepened. I pray, Father, that as we go back into our lives, our families, our churches, our workplaces, that we will be grace on tap to people uh, who are around us. And Father, for all of the needs represented uh, here with everyone present tonight online and in person and those that will join later by Zoom, 
you know the needs in, among their friends and family members. And we just pray that uh, through Jesus, you will meet those needs. And in the process, Father, that you will deepen our faith, our trust, our reliance on you and uh, help us in the face of all that we, we deal with, Father, that there is a deep abiding joy that comes from you uh, that undergirds us uh, through, through each of our days. Again, receive our gratitude. Let Jesus be exalted in our time together tonight. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. All right. Uh, recording is going along fine. Again, grateful to Vivian for taking role in all of these. And I don't have to uh, be distracted doing that. So open up your Bibles. Wow, well, I, mean, I uh, we ran out of number one. Number one. Yeah. So double everybody uh, just check and make sure uh, I, I very well could have uh, done more of one than the other, but make sure you don't have two uh, number ones. To, uh, you said we're out of one? Yes. Okay. Uh, honey, if you've got one, get it to only two? Okay. You've got one. All right. I can, okay. I can mail out, just let me know. And those of you online, I said it in the email. Uh, if any of you have trouble either just taking the Word document, and if you're doing it for credit, and uh, you can just do the Word document, email it back, do it that way. If you can print it out and you scan it and send it back, that's fine. But if any of you just simply don't have a workaround and you need us to mail hard copies, let me know later, text me, email me. Uh, it will be slower. Of course, you'll have to wait on it to get there, uh, but uh, we, we will do that, Cheryl. Uh, it's good about taking care of that. All right, so opening up to Ephesians. Tonight, I'm not going to use the hmm, two chapters next week. Uh, okay, first, let me run run through these. I usually always mention BibleHub.com. Uh, uh, you don't have to have studied Greek in order to uh, get a little bit from an interlinear. And the great thing about BibleHub.com, you can just click, you know, an interlinear here, and it'll bring up, uh, you know, uh, actually, if you just, if you're, I think our internet will work fine. Uh, I was already at Ephesians, but what it does is it uh, puts the English underneath the Greek, and if you don't read the Greek characters, you can just go right up above and read it in the uh, Roman characters. Uh, so that can that can help a bit. You can recognize some words like agape. You'll see some words that you know, but so there's that resource uh, online that you don't even have to buy a Bible program. I don't use it though as much as I use Bible Gateway. Uh, not that they have an interlinear, but when you're just searching uh, for, if you don't have a Bible program, I also have Logos Bible software, but this is a quick and easy way to search. And then uh, I show scripture on this one just because I can make it full screen for all of you better than I can uh, the Logos program. But you can just search word or two, you know, up here in the same place that you put in the text that you're wanting to go to. And so uh, that's very helpful. And then uh, uh, the Bible Project. Uh, I, uh, most of you are familiar unless you're studying for the first time. And uh, I always recommend the BibleProject.com. Uh, good group of brothers and sisters up in the Northwest, Portland, I believe, a nonprofit, Tim Mackey and others. Uh, they, I, I've used their resources for years now, and I've not seen anything that is not sound. Not that I'm a sole judge of what's sound biblically, but 
at least from the way that I've understood and, and been taught scripture, everything that they offer is, is so good. And, uh, and I said it Saturday, but I repeat it each time. One of the reasons that I think they can be such a help is their, their, their guiding statement about scripture is we believe the Bible is a unified story that leads to Jesus, that points to Jesus. And that's really crucially important, no matter where you're studying in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, to understand that it culminates in Jesus is important. And for anyone, if they don't have Jesus in their, in their sights, uh, then, you know, there's a, a real possibility that, well, it's not going to be as sound of a, uh, a study of scripture as it, as it would be otherwise whenever we see that Jesus, and that's taking it from himself, Jesus in, in Luke 24. Uh, let me just go back to the Bible gateway for that. Uh, Kirk, yes. Share on this Lots of repetitions, but I think that was that five minutes. Earlier on, and I and uh, yeah, I can I can find out later. Don't know part of it. I think is just the uh, the lag in in the in the internet here. But uh, Jesus uh, there in Luke twenty four near the end. Um, telling them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms, which, of course, for Jesus as a Jew, Paul, and all the others, that was their Bible. That was their scriptures. Uh, Philip Yancey has a book, The Bible Jesus Read, which is the Old Testament, what we call the Old Testament. But they refer to it, the law of Moses in the Hebrew. The law of Moses is Tanakh, the Torah. Uh, the prophets are the uh, Nadim and the Psalms are the Ketuvim, the writings. So the, you have Tanakh, T and K, Torah, Nadim, Ketuvim. And Jesus says there's, there's, you know, pointers written about me in all those scriptures. And that's why uh, a, a source like the Bible Project, whenever they look at scripture that way, uh, I think it helps us to be a more on track as we understand scripture. In Ephesians, we're going to get to see Paul uh, just uh, really elevating Jesus, and especially in the first three chapters. Well, that's kind of a culmination for Paul. That's a result of, you know, his knowledge and understanding uh, of, of all of the Old Testament scriptures and how they culminate in Jesus. In fact, to go to to one other, Paul will say, and we'll get to it later, but just so that you see it now, he says about Jesus in Colossians 2, 17, these are a shadow of the things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. And the shadow of things to come is what we see in the old covenant. The, the We call it the Old Testament. Again, the Jews wouldn't, they don't call it, they think that may be a little bit more derogatory Old Testament, New Testament to them is the Tanakh. And Paul says everything there foreshadowed Jesus. And so in Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, uh, we are going to uh, see Jesus kind of brought front and center. And from Paul, as Sean, as you mentioned earlier, uh, your enjoyment of studying Paul uh, he is a great one to help point us to Jesus. And I pray that for all of us, I don't know what your tradition was, that you grew up. Uh, sometimes uh, there are churches from backgrounds that prefer, that prefer Paul over Jesus, and maybe will even align themselves more as Pauline people. Well, uh, Paul deals with that in Corinthians, and he says, you know, basically don't do that. Some say they're a Peter, some say they're a Paul, some say they're a Paulus. He says, we're nothing but servants. We sow. It's God who gives the increase. Amen. The church, Amen. the church belongs to Jesus. He bought it with his blood. And so I, I pray that even as much as we, you know, in all of this, prison letters and Thessalonians is going to all be in Paul's letters. But we're going to constantly be looking to Jesus. Uh, he's going to be pointing us 
to Jesus. So Paul is, is good in that way, never, never points to himself. Uh, now you have the handouts. I'm going to go back to Ephesians and then we'll just be reading also ourselves here. Uh, we're not going to spend uh, a lot of time in the introductory material. It's one of the prison letters. He wrote it while he was in prison. I can, let me just go ahead and uh, bring up just a couple of things. Uh, and I'm not going to make it full screen so I can keep the rest of you there and I can see if someone, uh, un, you know, unmutes. But prison matters, uh, not Galatians, but Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. And we have Philemon written still while he was in prison. And, and then First and Second Thessalonians is, is added on to it. Paul, 13 letters of the New Testament. Of course, we knowing previously is Saul. Uh, of Tarsus, uh, terrorized the church, killed Christians, now sent to uh, the Gentiles. So Ephesus, where this one, the, the church is in Ephesus, where this one's written, part of the province of Asia. Uh, a lot of worship there in Ephesus of Diana, Artemis or Diana. Uh, Paul found this church, helped establish his church on his second missionary journey. You know, he made three, three journeys. And he was there here in Ephesus for a longer period than some of the other churches. Uh, taught three years in the Hall of Tyrannus uh, there in Ephesus. Um, and of course, you read, you can read about his stay there in, in the book of Acts. Uh, the church in Ephesus, mostly Gentiles. Some Jews who became Messianic Jews believed uh, in Jesus as the Messiah, but mostly uh, Gentiles. This letter sent to churches in that region, not just the one uh, church. And uh, we're going to see this pattern with Paul and uh, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Uh, uh, he even did it in Galatians, uh, where pretty much the first half is a little bit, you know, heavier uh, on the uh, mystery of Christ. It's it's cerebrally, a, you know, a little bit heavier or deeper. And so in Ephesians 1, 2, and 3, uh, we'll be talking a lot about uh, uh, Christ, the mystery that God revealed through him. Uh, then when you get to four, five, and six, it's more of the practical application. So uh, first, this is the nature of the life that we have in Christ, and then four, five, and six. So this is how we should live in Christ. And he does that in Philippians, Colossians as well, even in his longer book of Romans. Uh, up to chapter 12, uh, it's it's really heavy on, uh, on establishing this the superiority of Christ, and then 12 onward gives more of the practical applications. Uh, so one thing that to look out for is we start reading uh, the term in Christ, in Christo in the Greek, uh, in Christ is used 13 times. So again, that's why we can, you know, trust Paul to point us to Jesus. Uh, because he is so uh, Christ-focused in Christ, our life in Christ, hidden with Christ in God, you know, that term used over uh, 13 times. Uh, so there's other things. These are, this is all in your notes. Uh, and I will even, I usually put the PowerPoints up on Dropbox as well. Uh, I, I have the the handouts up there already. You get them in the email, uh, then they're up on Dropbox as well. If for any reason you can't find them in your email, go to that link in your email uh, for Dropbox, and then I will put the PowerPoint up there as well. Uh, so that covers a little bit of the uh, introductory material on Ephesians, but I want to reserve the rest of our time for going uh, 
through the text itself in chapter one. And so as I always do, I invite you uh, to share thoughts, input as we as we start going through it. Uh, please don't hesitate at all. It makes uh, our class richer to, to have your input. Uh, I'm going to just get one of you there uh, to, to read for us. I'll just start with you, Sean, and then uh, just to read part of it for us. And uh, because everybody can hear well, whenever they read, you can hear them fine, but it's not always the same vice versa if I have one of you read. Uh, so, Sean, if you would start and go ahead and read through verse 14, one, chapter 1, 1 through 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, to the saints in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. To the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of his sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. And he made known to us the mysteries of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times will have reached their fulfillment to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ. In him, we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is the deep, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession, to the praise of his glory. And again, to the praise of his glory. Thank you, Thank you Sean. Yeah. Uh, so uh just before amen, amen. uh any immediate responses before we uh start drilling down into to some of this i have to say the first thing i really have learned um in the last six months is the first sentence paul an apostle of christ jesus by the will of god i have had to learn in the last six months if i am to help others come to Christ, it is the will of God that their ears be open. I am to speak, but it is his will if it is supposed to be at that time. And that is something that was so hard for me to learn. Uh, just, just saying that she's learned, especially in the last six months, as God, as the Lord uses her or any of us to speak to others about Jesus, that and then you can correct me here, Sean, if I miss any of the nuance of what you were saying. But it's got to be, uh, it's got to be, you know, God's will at work through us. It has to be Him through us. And we could expound it a little bit to use words maybe that you didn't use per se, uh, the Holy Spirit working through us. It will always, as we see Jesus saying in John 16, 8, Absolutely. 13, yes, it, yeah. will, it, it has to be the Spirit at work uh, through us. Yes, we He uses. Uh, he, he dignifies us, God, and, and, and not just in some menial way. He dignifies us by letting us be true partners with him. Uh, yeah, it is. And, and he's not going to use angels or someone else if we don't get the job done. That we really are integral to God's 
plan of making disciples. And uh, and so, so important for us to see that. And we can't get everything in depth. You'll work through these. When you do study questions, you'll work through a number of these verses in more depth. But to just uh, touch on a few things, and then, of course, I can see if some of you unmute or raise your hand. Uh, someone noted there in the end of verse 1, to the saints in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus. So there's the first time that in Christo in, G in Christ was used. But so there you are. We have two homes. As followers of Jesus, we reside in two places. In our physical locale, for, for those of us here in this room in Houston, in the greater Houston area, but for those of you uh, online, whether Massachusetts, Mississippi, other parts of the state. So we have our... We, we live, we're, we're citizens of two kingdoms, and then we are in Christ as well, and, and that can't be downplayed at all. That's, that's where the rub comes. That's where the tension uh, results when we are followers of Jesus and we live as citizens of, in this case, the USA, uh, and yet our higher calling and devotion and patriotism is to Jesus himself. And so Paul reminds them of that here. Yes, you're in Ephesus and you're surrounded. You've got a cultural context there. A lot of worship on Diana or Artemis. And, you're, and so these guilds of workers, some of them lost their livelihood because they would not pay the, you know, the dues to the gods uh, of their particular guild. And so they were cut out of work. Uh, so he says, yes, you live in this context, uh, but your, your, your deepest, most fundamental identity is that in Christ. And so we need to hear that uh, because as followers of Jesus, uh, it, it is easy for us to let that uh, kind of be sidelined and we think more about our citizenship right here, uh, day in, day out. Yeah, exactly. And notice in verse two, grace and peace to you from God our Father. Paul's a good missionary. So there you have greetings for two different, you know, the mix of people. And he dealt with ethnic mixes and ethnic, you know, tensions all, you know, all the time in churches that he worked with. But grace was a common Gentile greeting, kadis. Uh, uh, peace was a, a, you know, a normal Hebrew greeting, shalom. Paul uses both, including both parts uh, of his audience. And then uh, Kurt, uh, have something to share? Hey, you. Hey, I think God. I think we need to say over and over again, and and this is this is what I feel from my ministry is that God doesn't have stepchildren, and He has not shortchanged anybody. If you are in Christ, you have all spiritual blessings and there is no such thing as literally having a bad day as a child of god because we've got all that he intended for us to have praise the lord yeah yes uh, a, a good way of thinking about it no no stepchildren no no grandchildren mm -hmm. in that sense we our sons and daughters. We don't get in on the coattails of someone else's faith. I've got a great godly heritage with my grandmother and my mother and dad. Uh, but, you know, her has to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And I'm influenced by, I'm grateful for, like Psalms, what is it, 16, 6. Uh, the boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. So I'm grateful for that. Uh, but we each have to uh, have our faith in Jesus Christ, be in Christ, as Kirk Sr. said there. Go on and, and look at uh, verse 3 then. And, uh, Praise be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, bless, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Uh, now, real quickly, every spiritual blessing in Christ. So sometimes we can think, well, you know, that's just all uh, spiritual talk, heavenly things. It's of, of no earthly good. But I pray that we 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 don't see it that way. That uh, that what we have in Christ and the the deeper life, He makes everything richer in, in our lives right here. 
our fellowship like this, even our meal times together, all of these tangible things that we do are, are enriched because of Jesus and because of this life that we have in him. So, uh, you know, the old saying, somebody is so heavenly minded, they're of no earthly good. Well, that, that can, that could be the case, but I pray that we don't see our lives in Christ like that, that our, our walk with him is not relegated to our Sunday attendance in worship, but rather it permeates, and it really must, and that's what he calls us to as followers, is following him must permeate every bit of our lives, uh, and until you and I have a hunger for him, and we daily integrate ourselves into him, we could say invite him in, but it's really us who needs to be integrated into uh, life in Christ. Uh, then he he will always maybe just be a thing about religion. But Paul goes deeper, and then verse four. Look at four. He chose us in Christ uh, before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless. So just look at that real quickly. Chose us in Christ before the creation of the world. Uh, okay, wow. This mystery of Christ goes way back uh, before Genesis 1-1. Uh, and there's other scriptures. You can just jot them down. I'm not going to take the time to go through them here. Uh, 1 Peter 1-20 says, uh, you know, similar thing to that. Revelation 13-A, it talks about those whose names were written uh, in the book of life uh, is about the lamb who was slain before the foundation of the world. Paul says, chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world. Revelation, the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. So we can't fully wrap our minds around that, but let us understand uh, God's desire for creating fellowship. The Father, Son, and Spirit have known fellowship from eternity past. God's so good. He's like, man, we've got such a good thing going here. We just can't keep this to ourselves. So create or create humans in order to share this fellowship with. Now, I know we don't always view our life in Christ that way, but that's really what it's about. And so this what God's plan for us to be integrated into Christ. And, and, and we're going to hear him say in chapter two of Ephesians, this mystery. Uh, and that mystery is, hey, God's not just going to do this people from these descendants of Abraham. He's going to integrate Gentiles together. It's going to be Jews and Gentiles, all people. Uh, well, I hope we're glad because I think that's every one of us here uh, as far as the Gentiles go. But just don't want us to miss that. And we can't plumb the depths of it, but chosen in Christ before the creation of the world. Uh, and God's desire for fellowship with us goes, goes way, way back. Uh, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons uh, through Jesus in accordance with his pleasure and will. Uh, and we're not, we're not going to, not to just avoid something difficult, but we're not going to uh, get into a, you know, a, a back and forth, a deep discussion of, well, when he talks about predestination, we're not going to, uh, you know, have a Calvinism discussion versus Arminianism, the free will. It really doesn't have to be, and I just want to say here, we don't have to view everything in such a binary, one way or the other, yes or no way, that there's elements of both uh, that are true. It is God, God choosing that in Christ, and we know his desire is not just for certain ones of us. Wow, aren't we lucky that I happen to be one of the chosen ones? No, just look at scriptures like 1 Timothy 2, 3, and 4, that his desire is that all should be saved. Uh, 2 Peter 3, 9, he doesn't want any to perish. So that's the heart of God. So when we see words like this chosen or predestined, I just want to encourage us uh, to think of the big heart of God and that what really reflects his desire is that none will be lost. Now, will there be those who make the decision not to? Yes, in a heartbreaking way, yes. But uh, I think it will help us in, our, in a better understanding of who God is to know uh, it's not just certain ones. Certain ones chosen for 
uh, for heaven, others created for hell. He desires all to be saved. Kurt Singer, go ahead. Yes, uh, the way I've tried to explain this has been, he has chosen us in him to be. Now, he didn't choose some people to be in Christ and some people not to be in Christ. That's not the point. The point is those of us who are in Christ are the chosen and we are chosen to be a certain kind of people. He did not, predestination does not make, in other words, the question is what is the destination of predestination? That makes it simple. The destination is that we might be holy and blameless before him in love and that we might be adopted. All those people who enter into Christ by their choice, by their free moral agency, who are in Christ are chosen to exhibit a certain kind of character. And the, and the preeminent the preeminent factor in that is that that's what the Holy Spirit is doing. He is forming that character and that heart in our lives as we grow, yeah. as we pray, as we worship, as we study. I don't yeah. I, I, I thank you for what you just said a moment ago. And, uh, and that's good. It's, it's helpful just to hear from different perspectives. And the important thing is that we have a, a good understanding of the heart of God, uh, that he's not capricious. He doesn't play cat and mouse. He's not, he's not finicky. We see the great heart, John 3, 16. He so loved the world that he gave and uh, gave his son, but he gave. And so that is it. And so none of this is inconsistent with that. It just helps us to, to, to interpret it. Let scripture help interpret scripture uh, in light of the big picture of what we know about God. So go on. I know there's little things that we, not little things, but some things that we'll have to skip over. Look at verse 7. In Christ, we have redemption through his blood, forgiveness of sins. So uh, redemption can be a rich word. We can't camp out on it a long time, but it's otherwise, otherwise maybe useless or, or, or destined you know, for destruction and to rework it into something beautiful. Uh, now, a less glorious example of that in our years in Kenya, one of the things that they would do there whenever tires would, would go bald, you know, you talk about bald eagle tires there, they really would, you know, run them down to bald. But even when they were bald tires, then some boondies, some workers would take those, cut them up into, into shoes and make tire sandals out of them. So something here that's just destined for a heat, this huge mound of, of thrown off tires, are repurposed and given another life. Well, in a much grander way, that's what God has done for us in Christ, uh, redeemed us. Uh, and from our, and Paul will say later, from some of our self-destructive ways of living, he, he has redeemed us and made us new in Christ. Uh, per se, he lavishes on us, uh, his grace that he lavishes. So don't ever have a stingy view with the grace of God. He says there in seven and eight, God's grace, he lavishes it on us uh, in Christ. Uh, in verse nine, he's made known the mystery of his will. So not mystery in the sense of like secretive society, you know, Masonic lodge or things that others can't know, secret knowledge like the Gnostics would go on to say. Uh, mystery in the sense that uh, God revealed slowly along the way. He, Peter gives us the picture of, of kind of using this language that angels longed to look into the things that God was doing in Christ. It's like there's angels, and they would have a little better perspective than us. It's like they were standing on tiptoes trying to see and figure out what God was doing. He revealed it along the way, but this was his mystery that through Christ, uh, he would purchase, as Revelation says, he would purchase for himself people from every tribe, language, people, nation. Uh, so that is the way that Paul uses mystery. Going on down uh, to 11, in him we were chosen. He works out everything. 
with according to his will. 13, we were included in Christ uh, when we heard the word of truth, the gospel, the good news. So the word gospel there, we know it means good news. So a quick reminder to all of us, I try to say this all the time, heard it years back, very helpful. Anytime we're speaking uh, about Jesus to others, it better come across, it must come across in some way as good news. Uh, the gospel is not a list of do's and don'ts. You know, you can't do this anymore. And it's the old, the old, the old, I know I, I know I use it every time, but it's not like a, it's not like, well, I don't drink, smoke with you or go with girls that do. It's not that kind of thing. It is the good news of what he has done for us in Christ. So whenever we're speaking of Jesus to others, always, always make sure that he comes across as good news in some way uh, to them. 13, you were included in Christ. Uh, and as Sean read there at the end of 13, you were given the seal, the promised Holy Spirit, a, a guarantee, a deposit, a down payment of the Holy Spirit living in us now. And you and I have a whole lot to do, whether we experience much of uh, the life that, that, that God has for us with the Spirit. We have to hunger for the Spirit. Jesus says in Luke eleven thirteen, will not the Father give the Spirit? To those who ask, and the verb there would be more like not until you're not just one point in time, not asking once, but to those who keep on asking, Paul had kids or grandkids, and do they usually stop with asking at one time for something they want? No, you, you know, they're usually pretty persistent, and we need to be that way. We don't need to assume, oh, well, I got the spirit, you know, when I came into Christ. Uh, true, you know, we. We come in contact there. We, we are given the Spirit, but Jesus says the Father will give the Spirit to those who keep on asking, who keep seeking, who keep knocking. So daily, really a part of our prayer should be, Father, fill us with your Spirit today. Guide us by your Spirit. Uh, any thoughts over any of those verses? I want us to we'll go on and in a few minutes here, finish reading. Precious, if you are... If you, you have it right there in front of you, I'll let you go ahead and unmute and maybe be ready to read get to the end for us, the end of chapter one. But any other, let's go ahead. Uh, are you uh, still there with us? Maybe not. Can oh, you hear me? Can you? Yes. yes. Uh -huh. Okay. At verse 15? Yes. Okay. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the first right hand in heavenly realms. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Amen. Amen. All of us, the uh, the the stickiness there in the. Pastor Kirk, I don't know. I think I, I'm losing you a little. 
It says network bandwidth is low. Yeah, I think we lost him. I think we lost him, yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd like to say that to me, the chapter one starts in three and goes down through 14 and there's seven blessings. And then 15 through the end of the chapter, Paul says, I want all you Ephesians to open your spiritual eyes so you can see how good you've got it. Because there is nobody on the face of the earth outside of Christ that has what we have. We have seven wonderful, marvelous, incomparably describable blessings. And then he says to the Ephesians, and he says to Kirk Castleman, he says, I want, Kirk, I want you to open your eyes and to see how good you have it. Because nobody, absolutely nobody outside of Christ has what you have. And that's not to say that we don't want them to have it. We want them to have it. That's the whole point. But what we've got is a beautiful thesaurus, a treasure, if you please, of great spiritual indescribable blessings. Man, it's, there's nothing better than being a child of God. Well spoken, Brother Kurt. Kirk Senior, we can't. Uh, Kirk Junior, we can't hear you. Well, when it kicked us out and brought us back in, it uh, muted me. So thank you, thank you for telling me that. Uh, real quickly, in our last couple of minutes, notice what Paul says in seventeen. I keep asking. So notice there the continuous present verb, I keep on asking, not ask one time that the God uh, of our Lord Jesus Christ will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so you will know him better. Uh, again, that's the work of the Holy Spirit, like Jesus says in John 16, uh, 8, 13, when the spirit comes, he will lead you uh, into all truth. The spirit of Jesus helps us to know Jesus. Paul will say in 1 Corinthians 2, no one can know the heart and mind of God except for the spirit of God. And so again, that's the reason for the, the need of humility in us and seeking to be filled with the spirit of God because we will be clueless about the true heart of God if we do not cultivate the soil of our hearts to be conducive to the working of the Holy Spirit. And that means like, again, a daily invitation for the spirit to come and, and lead us and to guide us. And the Spirit is Holy Spirit, and so yes, holiness on our part does matter. But that that day, the need for daily prayer. And notice, uh, Paul, I have not stopped giving thanks for you. Well, that's a Paul order for us. Uh, we need to be like Paul and give thanks for people. We may want to moan and groan about people, and it may be easier for us to to complain about some of the difficult people in our lives. And some of these were difficult. But notice Paul gave thanks for them. And then, and with our time running out, uh, Kurt mentioned this in verse 18. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be opened or enlightened. And again, that's part of the need for our prayer. Father, open the eyes of my heart. I can see with these physical lives, but you know, how well are we seeing with the eyes of our hearts to truly see God? to know, as, as Kirk Sr. was saying, uh, our how, how deeply blessed we are in Christ. I have a daily reminder popping up in Outlook uh, because I can have a tendency to moan and groan about things sometimes, and a reminder that I have more blessings than problems. Yeah. And that was 95-year-old. Yeah. Uh, and to make us more holy, to grow us and deepen us. Well, we have to stop there uh, because we've gone on in a few minutes into our buffer, and I'll have to get ready for the next class here at seven. So we will stop there, say bye to all of you online, and we will uh, see you again next week. Lord bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Everybody. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Good night. Good night. Good night.